So here I have WinBag attached on the Tocket VM. However, the actual patch and unpatch commands are not available yet. The reason is because the patch file actually effectively loads the dbg prep.cmd. However, the dbg prep.cmd file, in this file, we can see it's commented out. So we're gonna have to uncomment this and that's pretty much all we need to do. So once you've done that, you can detach and then reload it. Now we should be able to break. And we can see that the JavaScript file has been loaded. So now we're going to push the debugger race win binary onto the target VM. And we're going to run it. So we can see a couple of things. We have the goals of this particular lab. You can see it created all the objects that are required and the two enlistments with their specific width ending with 26 and 27. Then it goes into pre-preparing the enlistment and then we have the lab instructions. We can see that it asks us to set two breakpoints, one when TM recover resource manager X is called and another one when the TM P set notification resource manager is called. So we're going to set these breakpoints. For now, I'm just going to set this breakpoint because I know the second function is called when the first function is called. And then we know we're going to have to uh, use the patch command to block the recovery thread into the, the function before we can free the enlistment from a second thread. Okay, so we're going to hit a key to continue. So here, what we can see is that prepare complete has been called and then the instructions of the assisting thread are shown and obviously the, the VM doesn't reply anymore because it's stuck into a breakpoint but basically this will only be executed when we hit enter when we resume the debugger. So we're going to print the K resource manager. We know it's in the first argument. So we can see the resource manager has two enlistments. So if we go on Virgilus for a K enlistment, we have the K resource manager. Okay, let's look at the K resource. So the K resource manager, we have the enlistment head, which is a linked list of enlistments. And so as you can imagine, the enlistments are, as we said, uh, linked together with the next same RM when they point from the resource manager. So we have to subtract 88 to the pointer. So these are the two enlistments. So if we print the first enlistment, so we can see it's valid because it's had the cookie and the grid end with 26, which is the value we saw earlier, 26 and 27. So now if we look at the second enlistment, See the second enlistment ends with the grid 27. So we have our two enlistments that are part of the same transaction, 8F0 and 8F0. Okay, so if we go in Ghidra 
and look at when the TMP set function, TMP set notification resource manager function is called. I'm going to set a breakpoint on that uh, function call with control F2. You can see the breakpoint has been added in WinBag. So we're going to continue execution. Okay, so now we hit the first call for the first enlistment. So the enlistment is in um, is in R14 because it's accessed after the call. So yeah, so that's our first enlistment. So we're going to continue execution. I want to reach the second enlistment. Because if we go back to the Visual Studio code, remember that thread close enlistment function is called for the second enlistment. Here we pass this handle to the second enlistment. So that's the one that's going to be freed. So if we go back here, we continue execution. We want to hit this call TMP set notification resource manager a second time. Okay, so we hit it a second time. Here we indeed are dealing with our second enlistment. So what we're going to do here is going to use the patch command. But before we do, uh, remember it's going to patch the call ke wait for single object. Okay, so let's actually patch it. And then we continue execution. So for now, just setting a breakpoint to automatically patch it once, once the breakpoint hits. Continue execution. OK. So what we see here is that our breakpoints hit. And it automatically replaced the instruction at that address with a forever loop. So if we go back here and print the code, as you can see here, there is a jump to this same address and then an invalid instruction because we just patched two bytes. So here it's stuck. So we continue execution. So now if we go back to the target VM, we see uh, that we can now hit a key to continue. It's going to actually execute the code from our assisting thread. And then we're going to be able to free the enlistment. So we hit a key. We see enlistment should be freed. So now we go back in the debugger. And now what we want to do is we want to unblock the recovery thread. So we can do that and do unpatch. So now if we print the code again, we can see it's restored. We have the move RCX RBX. So now before we actually let it go, we may want to set uh, a breakpoint on a couple of instructions after, so after it's restored. So let's do it on this. And we continue execution. OK, so now our recovery thread was restored. Let's look at the actual enlistment we have. So this is the first enlistment. This is the second enlistment. B7, 427. So is this memory valid? It looks like it's still containing the data from our enlistment. So this is going to take a couple of seconds. OK, so it did take a few minutes, actually, to uh, finish parsing all the verifier pull information. So we can see uh, it parsed all the kernel pool, allocate and free operations. And it actually found one that is very interesting because it's telling us that the, the address we tried to verify was actually uh, freed uh, using the anti-close, which corresponds to uh, uh, our call from username to close the handle. So indeed, we've just verified that the address we try to print as a key enlistment is actually freed memory. So we made it. We managed to prove our mental model that the race condition can be worn using the debugger and the verifier. One thing to note is that 
this is still valid memory because of the verifier, but the verifier is telling us it's freed, which is great. One last thing is that if we continue execution, you'll notice that it doesn't crash. And it's basically because the verifier detected the, the free and it's not going to reuse the memory right away. So yeah. So I just want to show uh, one last thing, which is to see now that we've confirmed the verifier uh, shows the we win the race that we want to trigger the same thing without verifier. So we're going to detach. And we're just going to restore the snapshot without verifier. So we don't want to restore that snapshot. We want to restore the snapshot without verifier. Also, this snapshot is the one we want to use for the rest of the training anyway. So we may as well restore that snapshot. And now we can reattach with the windbag. So now we're going to push the binary onto the target VM. And we're going to execute it. So we can see here both of our instruments and with C7 and C8. So we're going to break the same thing as before on this function. And continue execution. Now we're going to hit a key to trigger our call on the vulnerable function. Here it's waiting to free the instrument so we don't do it yet. Just gonna see the key resource manager. And both of our instruments are here. So the first enlistment and the C7 and the second enlistment. And with C8. So we're gonna set a breakpoint on the call TMP set. Control F2. And then continue execution. So we know the first hit is for the first enlistment, so we skip it. Now we go to the second enlistment. So now in R14, we have BC0, which is um, our second enlistment. Indeed. Um, so now we're gonna set the patch and continue execution. Okay. So it did hit the patch. So now we can free the enlistment by hitting a key. So now the enlistment should be freed. And now we're gonna restore patch. So if we do unpatch, and now we're just gonna set a breakpoint just after it restores. Continue execution. Okay, so now if we look at the second enlistment, which was this address, PC0, what do we have here? Is it an enlistment? So it still still looks like a valid enlistment. And if we do pull on this address, look. So here without verifier, basically the memory is shown as freed. But as what is really interesting is that the size is not the size of an, an enlistment anymore because it should be just around 2C0 based on the size, sorry, 1E0 based on the size of Virtuous. 
However, it's 490 for the free check because of coalescing. But here, the memory is still valid. So if we don't show it using the pull command, we wouldn't see that we won the race because the memory hasn't been replaced yet. So it's still valid and it's not gonna crash, even though it's freed. So now I'm just gonna step uh, just to see where it goes. So we see it's actually testing some plugs and it's actually going to fetch the next enlistment using the move RGI square bracket RGI and in square bracket. And here if we look at RGI, we are basically in the middle of our enlistment. And so basically the EC48 pointer is fetched from a free chunk. So it's actually accessing free memory. We have our use that for free, we managed to do it. And this is actually very exciting to see a free chunk being used. For so many people, the part of exploitation they want to chase is this idea of popping shells and stuff, which obviously is nice. But when you spend several days or weeks reversing code and doing all of this work and theory crafting and banging your head, trying to understand how everything works, to hit something like this that shows that all of your work was legit is as awesome as popping shells sometimes. And it's good to remember it and enjoy that feeling as there will be other challenges to solve later on. So really, I advise that you just enjoy that moment without saying anything for 10 seconds. And to conclude, I hope you agree that it is worthwhile to confirm we can win the race with the ass assistance of the debugger, either with something like verifier or manually stepping in the debugger. Because if you didn't do this route and you had some idea how to trigger the bug, the race condition, and you just wrote the code in New Zealand and ran the program hoping it would crash, it may be that, as you've just seen, you trigger the actual vulnerability, but nothing bad ha actually happens, which is you don't see a crash because the code is just using stale memory that is still valid and you might incorrectly think that you are not triggering the vulnerability when you are actually are. And you could be spending hours trying to figure out what is in, New Zealand, in your username code is wrong or reversing more and more part of the kernel code, hunting for, for actual hints of why you don't seem to trigger the bug. So yes, the methodology relying on using the debugger to confirm the mental model is generally a good idea. And just to prove my point, let's continue execution. As you can see, it didn't crash because the memory, even though it was freed, still contained the previous data. Hope you enjoyed that part and see you later.